In the headlines to the CBC Newsnight, schools across Barbados to undergo major refurbishments. Booking numbers up for leading hotel. Two new justices swore in today. And in sports, West Indies look to battle ready on the eve of the T20 World Cup. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Good evening and welcome to the CBC News Night. I'm Wendy Burke. Major refurbishments are to be undertaken at schools across Barbados. The announcement from Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley came during last evening's Paris Speaks in St. John at the Gall Hill Hard Courts. Work is expected to be undertaken in three to four years. Some schools will be refurbished. There will be a few schools that have to be rebuilt. If it is that we're going to rebuild a school in St. John, then we still need to be able to deal with the fact that our transport system at the moment is predominantly geared to Bridgetown. It's not geared to moving within and across the parish. And therefore, I'm saying to Santia that as we have this conversation between education and the parish, that you may also need, and it's going to be the same thing in St. George and in St. Peter and in St. Lucy and thing, because what our bus stops say, I want to say out of city and to city because everything was focused there. Meanwhile, government is working to provide some relief from the heat for Barbadians. Prime Minister Motley announced plans to place portable cooling fans and hydrating stations in communities. The ministries of community empowerment and people empowerment have been tasked with undertaking the initiative and urgently acquiring the cooling fans and hydrating stations. So that we put them the cooling fans, so that we put them in districts all over the country, and I'm trying to see if we can get them in before August comes, when August and September is going to get really bad, and then obviously we will have it there on a continuous basis. But I want to be able to put those cooling fans, as well as hydrating stations, so that if things are really bad, somebody can at least come, go in the community center, or wherever the particular location is in each community that we try to do it in and that they can then have a little relief for a few hours when it is hottest during the day. During the meeting, residents also brought up the indefinite closure of the St. John's Primary, saying they will want a new one built. Kishmar Sinjis reports. I will let St. John's School clean up and come back because we have babies going into September term and the parents going to be like, hustling to get the new babies at Mount Tabor. So we're on it and get the school cleaned up. That's Diane Howell pleading with the authorities. Another resident, Rosalind White, says it hurts to see St. John Primary closed. I would like to know why St. John School have to be closed indefinite and put there. Look, um, let me say years ago, Mount Tabor School was closed. Huddersfield School was closed. Then society, someone came in and probably bought society and utilizing it now. What is going to be the come of St. John's School? Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley in response highlighted the work undertaken at the then St. John's School to address challenges. She says to construct a new primary school will take millions. Ms. Motley has also called attention to falling population numbers and the impact on schools. The population of Barbados has so declined that the number of schools that we had before are no longer sustainable because we just don't have enough children. Okay. okay? So that if we end up spending more money on infrastructure and things to keep as many schools, then there is less money to spend on qualitative improvements for the children. So when you have the conversation here in St. John, and I want to encourage the parish chairs to have the consultation with the Ministry of Education. Concerns were also raised about the state of roads in St. John, bus service and illegal dumping. Regarding roads, Deputy Prime Minister Santia Bradshaw says work will be undertaken during phase two of the Scotland District Road Rehabilitation Program. Welch Town, Welch Village is definitely on the list as one of the priority roads for the Scotland District. Um, 
the estimates would already have been done and that particular area has been included under the Scotland district in the phase two of the program. I think you would already see across St. John um, some work being done in the Glen Burnie area as well as St. Margaret's area. Um, and I'm sure that the same thing will be said that those roads were not touched for over 40 years as well. Um, and obviously, we, you know, there's places like Newcastle and other areas that have been prioritized further up in the program because of obviously the deterioration in a number of the districts in St. John. I would have explained before that while we have like a number of roads that people have recommended for rehabilitation, we have had to prioritize. Residents have also been assured pleas for sidewalks have also been heard. Kishmar Sanjis, CBC News. Barbados has a problem with cowage on fallow land. And in an effort to combat the problem, Minister of Agriculture, Food and Nutritional Security in Darwir says government has developed a national cowage management program. Meetings have been held with Attorney General Dale Marshall and landowners to put the program together. This was arrived at because many of the farmers recognize that cowage is not easy to get rid of. First of all, during harvesting of sugarcane, the seeds are scattered. When the seeds are scattered, they stay in the ground for as long as seven years. So you can't just get rid of cowich. You need a structured management program where when cowich is green, you send people to remove the cowich. When canes start to grow, you then have to get what you call the high clear tractors to go through and do spraying. This entire national management program will take care of all those things. The Harrison's Point facility in St. Lucie has been transformed to a secondary hospital to handle any influx of patients during the ICC T20 Men's World Cup. This has been revealed by Director of Engineering Services at the hospital, Paula Agboil. She says the Ministry of Health has been tasked with ensuring it is ready to handle any eventuality. And by any eventuality, we mean that if there is an influx of infectious cases or a mass casualty incident, that the hospital is ready to accept those patients. As a result of that, the hospital saw the need for the reactivation of Harsons Point, where if we become overwhelmed and we have more than four infectious cases which we can deal with at our Enmore facility, we will bring those patients up here to Harrison's Point. In this area right now where we're standing, we have prepared and outfitted it to be able to accept 20 patients, but this area can accept up to 38 patients. Ms. Agbo says while the primary A building can hold up to 38 patients, the tertiary building is also being prepared to house another 90 to 110 patients. She says that number is based on staffing availability, which may require some people to be called out from vacation. The hospital official explains the plans for the sickest patients to be treated at the QEH. We have all of our ICU beds, our theaters, and all of those critical services at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Those are not replicated here at Harrison's Point, and therefore it is um, easier for us to make that extension uh, for the critically ill patients at Queen Elizabeth Hospital and the less acute patients at Harrison's Point. We have also outfitted our Ward A3 with an additional eight beds in anticipation that if we have an influx and our main operating theaters become full and by extension our recovery room, it means then that we will have an additional eight beds that we can accommodate those patients to clear the theaters. After a satisfying winter, the numbers for the summer tour season are looking good for one of Barbados's leading hotels, Hilton Barbados Resort. The revelation came after the unveiling of a mural at the resort today. Trevor Thorpe was there. General Manager at Hilton Barbados Resort, Jacques Montiel, says demand for the island is stronger than last year and the coming season looks good. Mr. Montiel says with the pandemic now a thing of the past, people are traveling and again, Barbados is a highly sought after destination. He confirmed bookings are up. We have run in about 90% of occupancy and uh, so very healthy. Uh, we're looking for a, for a summer that is going to be very good as well. Uh, definitely much stronger than last year. 
Um, I think people are returning to Barbados. Uh, there is a great influx of flights coming in. Uh, the economy of the world is improving. So I'm very, very satisfied with what Barbados is doing um, as a country to promote the tourism. It's, it's definitely having a, a very good positive impact on us. He says the work of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated is paying off as winter is also looking good. Winter is uh, going to look very healthy, super healthy compared to last year. We're, we're actually, unfortunate, we, we want to take all the business we can, yeah. right? But uh, not that we're displacing business, but, you know, we're monitoring and uh, we have a commitment to the ownership as well of what the rates and what we put in the hotel. The resort is also developing a mural in its foyer to coincide with the ICC T20 Cricket World Cup. The general manager believes it will have lasting value for the resort as well as the game. We wanted to do a fun mural that is live, so it's going to take it live on its own. You see that the, all the uniforms are generic, uh, so when the semifinals have been decided, we are going to come back and we're going to paint the four teams that are going to be playing on the semifinals. And then if you see on the center, the two captains that are uh, not decided at this point, they're right next to the trophy, but they are not touching the trophy. The whole point is the day before the final, we will paint the uniforms of the two teams that are playing. So it is a live mural. The hotel official says an area of the mural was set aside for the signatures of the players taking part in the final. Trevor Thor, CBC News. Two new justices of appeal have been sworn in. Madam Justice Jacqueline Cornelius Thorne and Mr. Justice William Chandler took their oaths this morning at State House before President Dame Sandra Mason, Chief Justice Leslie Haynes and family. They will be appointed to the Office of Justice of Appeal in the Supreme Court. Both of them are happy about having the opportunity to serve their country at this level. Always good to uh, look at the development of our law from a different perspective. Between the two of us, Justice Chandler and myself, we probably have nearly 40 years of um, judicial experience. So there isn't much that we haven't seen. And uh, we both have had uh, experience on the Court of Appeal before. So we're really looking to move forward the work of the Court of Appeal. Um, together with the Chief Justice and the other judges. What I'm hoping for is that practitioners and the public alike will embrace the new philosophy of the rules in terms of settlement because we, we, we have not over the years developed that culture of settlement. Um, it's a, still a very litigious society and that adds to the backlog. You know, a lot is said but backlog is something that all countries st struggle with and we deal with them in our own respective ways. Who fled the Queen Elizabeth Hospital is back at the institution after being rescued by fire officials. Police say a report was made to the Operation Control Center around 11.30 last night that the patient of Ward C5 had left. Then around 20 minutes after 6 this morning, an anonymous caller indicated there was a man on the roof of a bar at Spry Street in the city. The individual fit the description of the patient reported to have absconded from the hospital. Police say he was interviewed and appeared to be distraught. He was assisted from the roof by officers from the Barbados Fire Service without incident and was returned to the QEH by police. Coming up, a new 10-year plan of action adopted at the latest SIDS conference wraps up. The fourth United Nations Conference on Small Island Developing States wrapped up in Antigua and Barbuda with unanimous support for a bold new 10-year plan of action that will deliver meaningful change for this group of vulnerable countries. The Antigua and Barbuda Agenda for SIDS, ABBAS, a renewed declaration for resilient prosperity, puts forth a new ambitious pathway for SIDS sustainable development. The closing ceremony, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Barbados with Responsibility for Climate Change, Small Island Developing States and Law of the Sea, Elizabeth Thompson, says countries have worked hard on the agreement. This is the feel-good moment. This is when we say we've worked hard, we've done it, we have come to agreement and consensus always feels good. But the real challenge lies ahead of us. 
we have been discussing the prosperity, the development, the sustainability within the context of SIDS now for several years. How do we move from conversation to implementation? Where do we find the capital and the new capital that is necessary? How do we build the partnerships? How do we build the policy and programmatic frameworks that will deliver to the people on the ground? Deputy UN Secretary General Amina Mohammed emphasized no effort should be spared to ensure the voices of vulnerable and marginalized groups in SID continue to be heard including those persons with disabilities, older persons, and indigenous peoples. We recognize the commitments that have been brought to the table, the European Union, the Netherlands, Germany, the United States, and we hope others will also step up to the scale, to the urgency that we require now. This is not about more projects. It is about inclusive growth that delivers that what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Mixed reactions tonight regarding a new development in Bathsheba St. Joseph, which is the focus of an online petition. The petition is demanding government implement restrictions to protect the East Coast from overdevelopment. Crystal Hoyt has more. This is Bathsheba St. Joseph, just a few years ago. Before a multi-story construction project by Panoramic Builders for property owner Michael Anders began this year. It's one of several recent developments occurring along the scenic, rugged East Coast. This one has, however, resulted in an online petition with almost 3,000 signatures fighting to keep the East Coast sweet. Lana Whitley, a Barbadian living abroad, started the online campaign. She says she's not against development, but is adamant it must be done responsibly. I'm not against development of the East Coast. I'm not against development, period. I think development um, generates jobs. Development um, can increase property value for the people who live there. There's many benefits of developing the East Coast, but it can be done in a way that protects the heritage, the culture. This petition is specifically asking, how are we going to protect our East Coast from overdevelopment? What are the rules that we're gonna set in place for anybody, local or foreign, who would like to build a structure on the East Coast? When I visited the Queen Bathsheba community, some residents were upset about losing what they affectionately called the slab. One woman who spoke to me off camera explains why. I mean, for the eight years that we've lived in Barbados, the slab has been like this central part of the community. It's where everyone used to hang out, could watch all the surfers, a parlor at Soup Bowl. It was just a congregating spot. It's all the tour buses would drop their you know, crew off there to take pictures. Some of the local women would sell their crafts there. It was just a real community spot. But not everyone is against the ongoing construction. Anthony Nurse says the removal of what many describe as the nose of Bathsheba was necessary. In order to build wood, you got to build it, you got to dig. You got to dig. You got to really dig it down. All we're interested in that it don't stop my people from crossing the sea path or the line. But otherwise, I have no problem with it. I welcome it and I hope it will develop the place for me because we need a little more visitors coming. When I reached out to Mr. Anders for a comment, he said he would be happy to discuss the project with me at some point in time. Crystal Hoyt, CBC News. 17 young participants have completed a program that included training in life skills and teamwork as well as job attachments. They were the second cohort this year to complete the program, which is organized by the Apprentice Trust International Program in association with the Sandals Foundation. Rachel Agard has the story. 12 weeks of training have paid off for 17 participants of the second installment of this year's Princess Trust International Program. Training included a residential week at the Eastern Bible College, but the highlight of the program was safety of life at sea training at the Barbados Coast Guard ship, where participants jumped off a 20-foot pier and performed an abandoned ship drill together. 
They also completed a four-week community project at the Grisette Resource Center with help from the community and engaged students at the St. Stephen's Primary and Grisette Primary Schools as part of their team challenge. 22-year-old Kian Brown, who copped the title of Most Outstanding at the end of the course, says she was at crossroads in her life, not knowing what to do, and so took a chance by signing up. And while she started the course in week three, Miss Brown is a testament that hard work does pay off and says she won't trade the experience at all. Throughout the program, while well, it was overall enjoyable and I have learned about my self-development, it did not come without its trials and tribulations. For example, I struggled during our community project week where I was getting very frustrated and anxious because things weren't going as smoothly as I hoped. The project taught me about patience, managing my feelings, and understanding that imperfection is perfection. Featured speaker Magistrate Graveny Bannister tells participants life is not measured by failure and they should always keep trying. He also urges them to embrace this advice from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If you can't be a pine on the top of a hill, be a shrub in a valley, but be the little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you win or fail, but be the best of whatever you are. The judicial officer is also encouraging participants to have some form of spirituality in their lives. When you are faced with the challenges of this life, you cannot do it on your own, no matter how bright you are. But there must be some divine source, some form of spirituality that you can look to, to be able to pray. Rachel Lagarde, CBC News. The Business Report is brought to you with the kind compliments of the National Insurance and Social Security Service. More than a contribution, it's your lifeline. In tonight's business news, Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Senator Chad Blackman, is calling on the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados, ICAP, to play a significant role in national development. Addressing ICAP's 50th annual general meeting, Minister Blackman challenged the Institute to increase its social media presence and to form international partnerships. More seminars, more partnering with international agencies, and speaking up on critical issues of global import, there's nothing stopping you. And government will work with you because you have 50 years of proven success and track record. And that's the point I want to make. You are a stellar beacon in this part of the world. Minister Blackman added that notwithstanding the international standards of accounting, ICAB should start charting new ways of doing things that reflect the realities of doing business in the Caribbean and the Global South. When you look at the global financial system and the global financial architecture, it is not mirrored or created in our image. But yet, we have to take part in it, and we know the challenges that it presents to us as takers of that structure. But as Africa opens up further with the Africa continental free trade area and Barbados deepening its relation with the continent, there's immense opportunity for you as service providers, not just only in, in accounts, but business and guiding that way of how we do business in the Caribbean and in Barbados must now be part and parcel of your legacy. As the countdown continues to the ICC Men's T20 World Cup, one of the island's iconic brands has released a special edition product in time for the tournament. It's Mount Gay Rum. And yesterday, officials revealed the limited edition EXO label at the Mount Gay Visitor Center. Commercial manager for Remy Control and Mount Gay in Barbados, Anise Jordan, says the decision to bring a special product is in keeping with their connection to and partnership with cricket. For the past three years, we've been highly involved with cricket. It's a sport that is very dear to us, very dear to Barbadians, so we really wanted to be involved closely with cricket. And for the past three years, for the last three session matches, we've been highly involved. But this year, we 
are actually very proud and excited to say that the pouring room inside Kensington Oval for all the matches in Barbados at Kensington Oval will be Monge Rum. <laughs> and we are equally excited to say that we are the proud sponsor and the official sponsor at the ICC Fan Park Zone. That will be at Copacabana. Ms. Jordan adds the special edition rum will only be available at select locations. This beautiful bottle and beautiful label will be available and is already available in location, special location. We didn't want to put it everywhere. So we're going to put it in the airport and the port terminal as well. So it will be available for the visitors so they can come and have a special copy, right? And we will have it in selected location as well in Wine World as well. So not forgetting, of course, the place here, exclusively here at the visitor center and at the distillery as well in St. Lucie. Thanks for viewing. Do enjoy the rest of your evening.